Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the very first Grasshopper Fundamentals video. Um, this is going to be all about basically how to operate, how, what the fundamentals of operating Grasshopper are. Okay. Um, we're going to obviously be going into a lot more depth in later videos. Okay. Where we, uh, we covered Rhino in the last video. Uh, we covered, uh, uh, we just talked about the Rhino interface in the last video. This time we're going to talk about the Grasshopper interface. And later on, we're going to go into depth into the components. Uh, and then and then we're going to go really in depth into, you know, the, 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 um, the fundamentals of systems thinking. Okay, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just, we got to figure out how the heck are we supposed to operate this, this thing. Everyone's talking about Grasshopper. Parametric fill, he keeps talking about Grasshopper. How the heck do we operate this thing? I'm going to tell you. Just uh, have some patience. Have a little bit of patience, okay? Thank you. Okay. So, um, where do we start? Let's think. Okay. I'm going to start off. Uh, so, so, basically, we're going to cover everything that you can see with your eyes here. But I just want to kind of set up how we're supposed to think about operating in Grasshopper. So, first of all, you know, you already know how to operate in Rhino, I think. And if you don't, you can go back, check out my vid my Rhino videos on YouTube or on this website. Um, and so we're going to open up Grasshopper like this. We're going to launch Grasshopper. It's going to open up. We can see some uh, recent files. Or we can start a new script on this canvas. So this is this is called the canvas, okay? Because the canvas is where we can drop our components, okay? What the heck is a component, Phil? I'll tell you. A component, we can think about a component the same way that we think about a command, okay? So let's build a box in Rhino. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to, um, you know, and then I'm going to do the same thing in Grasshopper. And we're going to see how this, uh, how this Grasshopper concept is working, okay? So first I'm going to draw a rectangle. And now my here's my example. We're going to talk about extrude. So you saw you might have you might have seen already that basically um, this is an extrude component. So keep that in mind, okay? Right now we're going to do the extrude command though. And I'm going to show you um, we can think about components the same way that we're thinking about commands. So let's do uh, let's do the extrude command. We're going to do the extrude um, extrude curve okay and um, when we do extrude curve look at what it says it says fill select curves to extrude so I'm saying okay all right Rhino you want some curves to extrude I'll give you this curve I want you to extrude this curve that's an input so basically I just gave Rhino a data input this curve is just is the data that's required in order to make the extrusion okay it's the base the base profile okay and now that we've selected the curves we can hit enter and now we can start building our box and uh, this is now we come to a second data input which is basically the height of my mouse the height that I that I place my mouse or the number that I type in it could be could be the height of my mouse or or the number I type on. Either way, we have to define a second data input. So again, the first data input, select curves to extrude. Okay. Yes, I want these curves to be extruded. That's the first data input. Enter. The second data input, what is the height? Okay, so 100. That's what I want. That's what I want, Rhino. Okay. 100. Enter. Now we have a box. Okay. Now, with Rhino, we don't have access to that original. I can't change that original rectangle. I can modify the 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 resulting box, but um, but I can't I can't uh, necessarily modify that that rectangle and have the box change. Watch this. See, I'm re I'm modifying the rectangle, but the box is not changing. Even though I made the box using this re this reference data, this is the first uh, uh, item. This is the first data entry that I put into this extrusion process. But if I 
modify the original data item, it does not affect this box. This is because Rhino is not a parametric system. So, but, um, so let's go back in the Grasshopper and let's look at how things are a bit different in Grasshopper. But fundamentally, there are a lot of similarities, but there are also going to be a lot of differences, okay? So our component, we're on our canvas. We want to extrude. We want to go through the extrusion process. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna explain a lot of the other stuff that's going on here, but I just first want to get basically lay out the fundamentals of what's going on in Grasshopper. Extrude, so we double click on the canvas double click on the canvas, we type in extrude. Um, you're gonna get used to, you know, what's the proper extrude. Uh, we don't have extrude curve like we do in Rhino. We're just gonna use extrude. So now what do we do? Now uh, this component, component looks angry. It's all orange, it's angry at us. It's got this little flag. We have, uh, we don't have the sufficient data to execute this, this task basically. It's telling us which input parameters um, do not have the sufficient data. And that's input B and D. So both of them are empty, okay? So first of all, what we can do is we can hover over the center and it will say, it will tell us the name, it'll tell us the nickname, and it will also give us a little description. It's saying extrude curves and surfaces along a vector. That sounds good, that sounds cool. And and then, but how do we operate this, okay? We're gonna hover over the inputs. These two are the inputs. This is the outputs, okay? This is the this is an input. This is the base, okay? So it requires a, a base. We need a profile curve or a surface. And that little hexagon with the swirl thing that looks like it's trying to hypnotize you, um, it's basically, that's a symbol uh, for, for a curve or surface, okay? And uh, so it's just a, it's just an easy way to identify what is required as the input. Over here on the D, D is often standing often stands for direction. Uh, again, it's asking for it's asking for an extrusion direction. And again, the the hexagon this time it has an arrow, and that's just a short form. It's an icon asking for a vector. Okay, so so basically we have to understand what the inputs are in order for the component to do its main job, which is which is outlined when we hover over the center, and then it's going to tell us what the extrusion, uh, what the output is. It's going to tell us what the what the result is. This is the output. So we have our inputs, we have our main, uh, the main work of this component, and we have our outputs. But let's let's take a let's go back to Rhino. Look at this, extrusion, extrude curve. This is an input. Select curves to to extrude. This is an input. A data input, enter, okay. Uh, uh, extrusion distance, 100. This is a data input, okay. Enter. This is a data output. This is what was out. This is what was uh, outputted from the extrusion uh, command uh, calculation, okay. To see what's going on here. Um, fundamentally, it's the same process. So, um, uh, but the difference is we have access to all of the decisions that we're making in Grasshopper at all times. Okay, so how do we input a profile curve or surface into this component? Well, there's going to be there's many 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 ways that we can do that. But just to start out with it, let's just input. Let's just grab a a very simple curve parameter. Okay, so I'm going to type in curve and uh, this is a curve parameter, and uh, you'll find all your parameters in the very first category here. Anything that is a hexagon is basically a component for us to input our uh, some type of geometry or some type of data uh, from Rhino. Um, and a parameter is just very simple. It's just a, a it's just um, a container. We can think about it like a container for, for some type of geometry or data or geometric data. Okay. Lots of different options here. Okay. And then we also have the ability to use these containers for numbers, text, colors, 
times, okay, file paths. So that's what these that's what these uh, hexagons are doing. There, it's it's basically defining that it's a parameter. Okay, so now that we have this curve parameter, we can um, see that the the inputs and the output uh, the inputs and the outputs are a lot more simple than most components. They don't have these letters because um, they basically just in you just input a curve and it export and it, um, and it outputs a curve. Okay, it doesn't really do any calculation, so we can hover over this. And, uh, and and what we can do is we can either create a curve in Grasshopper, but for now we're just going to take this curve out of Rhino. We're going to plug it into Grasshopper. Okay, So we're going to hover over this thing. We're going to do right click with our mouse. And we have some options here. And we'll, we'll, we're going to ignore most of these options for now. And this is something that we'll get into later. But what we're going to choose is set one curve, set one curve. Okay. We've already selected the curve in Rhino. So once we do set one curve, it's going to grab that curve. It's going to throw it into this parameter. Alternatively, we could have done set one curve. And now in Rhino, it's saying, what curve do you want to use, bro? And I'm going to say, I want to use this curve. Okay. So now we have that curve and we, we can tell that because when we click on our parameter, it highlights in green. Okay. That's giving us a preview of what's inside this parameter. So now we have a curve in the grasshopper canvas. And what that means is that this 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 component wants an input. It wants an input of a curve and this is a curve. So all we have to do is connect it with this wire. Boom. So now we've we've input this curve into this component. We've we've gone from this output to this input. That's the fundamental. Fundamentally, that's how Grasshopper works. Um, so now uh, it's still not working. Why isn't it working? Well, we go to our flag here, um, and then you can see we have we have one less uh, we have one less issue, but we still don't have enough data for the D input to execute our task, our component. So what the D needs is a vector. Now let's think about that in Rhino. Um, it wants a vector by default. Rhino is choosing the Z vector, and then we're just typing in the the units of our vector. But that's not always the case because we can change the direction. We could change the direction. We could make it. Um, I don't know. We could make it go in this direction. So that's a different vector direction, and we can still type in the units. We could still type in fifty units. Okay. So basically. Uh, we're type we're 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 defining a vector in Rhino, but that's not, we're not really thinking about it that way. But we're always defining a vector when we're doing some kind of operation like this. It's the same thing in Grasshopper. Okay, a vector again, a vector is is uh, is a direction and an amplitude. Okay, so first we can select a direction, and what we'll do is we'll grab a unit vector. There's lots of different ways to do it, but for now we're going to grab a unit vector unit Z. So a, a unit vector basically, uh, once we plug this in, it's going to make a, uh, it's going it, to, a unit vector has a factor of one. So it's zero, zero, one, because it's a, a Z vector, a Z unit. So it's zero, zero, one. So it's just going to go one millimeter up. So it's already working. Actually, we don't have that orange flag anymore. This component is not angry at us anymore. It's gone, it's gone gray because it's, it's not orange anymore. It's not angry. We're good, and uh, but right now it's only one unit, and we want it to be a hundred units. So we need to change the factor. Okay. So so again, we're going we're kind of going backwards in the script, uh, kind of reverse engineering how we want this thing to work. So now we're looking at now that we solved this, we gave this the the input that we wanted. It wanted a vector. We gave it a vector. We 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 went from the vector output into the vector input over here. But now we actually need to change the factor. So we're looking at this input and uh, see the hexagon right there. It's asking for a number because the hexagon with 0 0.01, that's an icon for a number. And it's asking for a unit, unit multiplication. So what we can do with that is we can, we can uh, plug in a slider. And there's a lot of different ways that we can uh, activate a slider. We can, go, we can just type in slider if you want. Uh, slider is going to, by default, it's going to be zero 
to one with three decimal places. We have a lot of control over that with two ways. We can either double click and then we can change the, the slider parameters in here. We can make them uh, rounding to integer, integer numbers, even numbers, odd numbers. We can change the number of decimal places. We can change the minimum and the maximum. Uh, and we can change the range, okay? But I would rather just uh, create the slider the way that I want to from the start. So instead of having to go into that menu, if I can avoid it. So what I'm going to do is type, I, I, I would say, I don't want to, I don't want any box that's smaller than 25. This is just an arbitrary example. I don't want any box that's smaller than 25. So I'm going to first type in 25 and then I'm going to do dot, dot. And that means we're going to the next number. We're going to the max 25 is the min. And then we're going dot, dot. Let's go to the max. And now I think I want the max to be 200. I don't think I'm going to make a box that's any bigger than 200. And I want a resolution that's, that's one decimal place. So the min is 25 dot, dot. The max is 200. And then we're going to put in 0 0.0 to activate one, a resolution of one decimal place. When we hit enter, now we have 25 to 200 with a resolution of uh, one decimal place. We can either slide like this, if we, but if we hold control, we will be able to slide uh, one, uh, uh, one unit at a time. You, you have a lot more control over the slider that way. So again, hold control, you have more control. Interesting. So the slider has an output. The slider is going to output whatever number is showing up on the slider. So we can use a wire. We can plug it into the factor. Whoa, holy cow. Okay, that's crazy. There we go. So now we have a box. Okay, and now we can change that uh, that that vector factor with this slider. Super cool. We can also, unlike in Rhino, we can also change this original curve, and the, the extrusion will automatically update. So that's interesting. So you can see that we actually have all different parameters available to us at once, right? If we go further, if we take this further, we can do we can do a mirror. We can plug in the output. This is the output. We can click on it to preview that the thing in green is 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 the output of this component. We go in output. We have an extrusion. Uh, the mirror component. It needs a base geometry, which means any type of curve or surface. So we go from the extrude component to the mirror component we need a plane of some type now i can input a plane oh it's it's already defaulting to uh the x to the sorry to the the yz plane so the it's it's already it's already by default putting the the uh, yz plane and that's why we're not getting the little flag that says hey man we need some more data we're not getting that flag because it has a default so some components will come with default inputs some won't so this one has a default. We can we can choose either to change the plane. I can say no no no. I want I want I want a XZ plane. And then it's going to change that plane. It's going to put it there. Okay? So we can we can do an input like that. Um and and uh we can also create a plane using, you know, some type of parametric routine. Uh, which is something that we'll get into later. But let's say that uh, you just want to do it really quick. just want to get it over with. You want to do it really quick. You want to do it as if you're modeling it in Rhino. And I'm just going like this. I have this object and I want to mirror it. And I just like, I want to mirror it right here. And then get this object over here. Let's say you want it to be that simple. Okay, I'll show you. We have, we have our original object. We have our mirror plane. Sorry, we have our mirror component in our output. Uh, what we can do is right click it okay right click set one plane and now we can we can click the origin of our plane and then we need to make sure that we're typing in our x-axis our y-axis okay and now it's you now it's underground okay so what we would want to do to to mimic what we did in in rhino is set one plane 
Uh, and what we're gonna what we're gonna do is uh, set our origin here, and uh, we're gonna have to make it vertical like this. And now now we have our our mirrored object just like just like we did in Rhino. Uh, now the way I did that was uh, the origin. And then I went back to the origin. I, I'm holding control so that I can type in a, a point that's a vertical to the last point that I that I clicked. Okay, holding control makes our cursor go vertical. Um, and then I'm defining my x-axis, my y-axis of this plane, and that's how we're ending up with that object. So, anyways, the point is now that we have a, a sort of a string of different components, we can think of them kind of like commands. But, there, but all of our parameters are available to us at, at any time, right? Now now that we have this string of, of components, now we can modify this, and everything else will uh, modify accordingly because it's starting here, it's going through here, it's going to here, okay? And both of these will modify. Uh, th this, this factor will modify both of them. I think you see what's going on. I think you're picking it up. So that's kind of the fundamentally how this this whole operation is working okay we have our inputs we're checking what our inputs are we're trying to figure out what components we need to put on the canvas in order to achieve those inputs there's good there's always then there's kind of an infinite number of different ways that we can achieve those inputs right we can I can create a panel instead of a slider and I can just type in 95 if I want to do it that way uh, and now I have uh, the same thing it's not as a fit it may not be efficient because I can't slide it. I can also generate a number uh, parameter and I can input the number into it there. I can type in 95 like that, okay? Uh, it's, all, it's all achieving the same result. It just depends on the context, depends on what's the most appropriate. Maybe you're trying to save space, okay? Let me actually turn on uh, uh, bifocals here. There we go. Now you can see the names of these components. I like to use icons Okay, let me show you that right now. I like to use icons because they save a lot of space and the brain really locks onto icons a lot more than with text. But um, if but we can also choose to turn on um, the full names. Oops, not that one, this one. Oops, not that one, this one, there we go. Now it now has these like short form names, extrude, mirror. Um, that's your choice if you want to do that. I prefer not to because the components are always uh, become larger. Uh, everything becomes black. There's no color. There's no shapes. I like using the icons because uh, my brain can pick it up a lot faster when you when you have a script with hundreds of components. Um, this becomes, I think, a lot more efficient. But we can use bifocals, which doesn't come with Grasshopper natively, but you can you can download bifocals, and with bifocals we can see the uh, icons, and I can put the names of the icons above the components. So I'll probably be doing that in most of my tutorials for you guys. Okay. So that is the fundamentals of of how Grasshopper is operating. Now let's just spend a few minutes to talk about some of the stuff that's going on around the rest of this interface. Okay, um, we have our previews. Okay, our preview the curve uh, the curve is being previewed here. This the original extrusion the mirror. We can turn the preview off like this. Turn the preview on like this. We can also turn off all the previews like that. Okay or we can turn on wireframe preview, okay? We have some uh, display options, like this one will only allow the selected object to be previewed. Um, these are the some document uh, settings. You can change the color of your no normal objects and your selected objects. You have uh, some quality options to change uh, maybe how well the computer is gonna uh, refresh your geometry, if you have a powerful enough graphics card, you just you can leave it on high. If not, you want to leave it on low quality. Okay. Um, now, what's going on up here? Now, uh, this is where 
all of our components reside. I talked about the parameters, of course. Uh, I, again, uh, anything with the hexagon, it's some type of parameter where we can input geometry or some type of geometric data. Uh, we, in the rest of the parameters, we have some, some uh, this is where we found our number slider actually, and a lot of other inputs that we can use. Um, these are kind of like, these are kind of like the interactive, um, the uh, interactive parts of the script, like this button. We can turn the button on and off. It's kind of fun. We have a knob. Woo wee. Okay. Um, we have like colors and stuff like that. And if we go through these, you can see that the components are changing a lot. So uh, we have different things like math. Uh, math, mathematical components, operators, polynomials. We have some scripting components, and uh, and 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 you're gonna get used to, you know, if you don't know what the component is called, you're gonna get used to kind of figuring out where you're supposed to look for them. This is where you're gonna find all of your uh, set components for like data management, list list management, list organization list modification, stuff like that, grafting, uh, some tree modification components. So again, you can double click, you can look it up that way, or you can go through the tabs and you can find all your components that way. And then you can, you can click here to open up all of, all of them in this kind of subcategory. Now you'll notice that, um, I probably have a lot more tabs here than you do. So all of the basic tabs are here. We have vector, curve, surface, mesh, intersect, transform, display. The user tab, you may not even have that yet. That's if you're making custom clusters and you're turning your clusters into components, which is something we'll talk about later. And everything else, um, this is stuff that I've downloaded from Food for Rhino, okay? Food for Rhino is, uh, a great an amazing resource for for grasshopper users um, this is where you can uh, download download these add-ons so I have tons of I have a bunch of add-ons there there are there are literally hundreds or thousands of add-ons I'm not sure um, that can do some pretty crazy stuff this is something for example that I used when I was in building science school where this is what something we can use to calculate uh, weather, weather data, we can calculate, uh, there's several, there's environmental analysis tools, there's data we can use to calculate the energy efficiency of buildings, the thermal efficiency of walls, uh, some crazy stuff like that uh, with Ladybug. We have other things, we uh, we have Pufferfish, which is, I believe, um, developed by uh uh, a brilliant guy that works in the computational design department at Nike, and um, this is this has a lot of great um, components for surface modeling and uh, stuff like that. We have things like Kangaroo, which is a physics mo a physics engine. Basically, uh, we can simulate a lot of different kind of interesting physics models. Okay. We have stuff like MetaHopper, which is actually kind of like Grasshopper for Grasshopper, because it can control things on the canvas. Anyways, you can you can look through Food for Rhino, and and I guarantee you're gonna have to download an add-on eventually, because you're you're gonna want to. There's a lot of crazy stuff out there. I'm using these add-ons all the time, for sure, for sure. Okay, um, and so that is the basics of what's going on in in Grasshopper. I think I don't think I've missed too much. You you have obviously your tabs here with some other options. Um, and um, okay, I think I think I've actually covered most of the stuff I wanted to cover in the basics. Um, actually, one more thing I should mention is that if you need to see if you want to get a preview of what's going on in your in the output, just open up a panel. And the way that we can do that is you can type in panel if you want, but I would just type in quotation mark, one single quotation mark, press enter. Now you have a panel. You can type stuff in that panel, but you can also use the panel to preview what's coming out of your component. 
like this like open we have an open brep coming out of this component interesting we have an open brep coming out of this component what's over here this is oh that's a vector interesting right that's actually a vector um what's coming over here that's like just a number okay and we have a curve here so so open up your panel i, I kind of use a panel like this it's just like a tool for me to actually see what the heck's going on i'm using the panels all the time all the time like almost 100 percent of the time i have a panel near me to see what the heck is going on inside these components when i'm changing stuff when i when i need to see what what am i going to use uh after this well i have to see what's in there there's an open beer app right now it's obvious but uh, sometimes we're going to have hundreds of different objects and they may not all be open B reps. Maybe they're grafted in a certain way. We need to look at the data management. Anyways, we'll get into that stuff later, but I think, I think I'm going to wrap up this introduction. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I hope you're looking forward to the rest of the videos as much as I am, because I'm super excited to be making these videos. This is so much fun. Um, the next videos are probably going to be getting into the more specifics about these components. I'm going to try to make a video for every single one of these components. Is it, is it possible? I don't know. We'll see, but I'm definitely going to do the basic ones. No, I'll do all of them eventually. Eventually I'll get through all of them. Um, and I'm going to, but first of all, I'm going to explain just the details of everything that's going on in here in this menu. So make sure to check out my next videos. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.